Okay, today I'm going to cover going over some of the injectors and uh, some of the highlights on how to remove them. People's asking me different questions, so I'll I'll show this the way I do it. Um, it may work for you. If not, if you have any other ideas, feel free to you know offer them to us, and maybe it's better than mine. And I can start doing them too. So now I'll go over some of the stuff I do. This truck we're doing um, we're doing all kinds of stuff on this truck. EGR cooler, oil cooler. Um, we're doing the Fickum. We're going to be doing all kinds of stuff. So it's going to be in different state of tear down along with it. But I'll try to highlight right now just the injectors and the tools I use. The, the, what I like to use, I use this 12 volt uh, Milwaukee uh, ratchet. It's really good. I don't have the hose dragging all over. It has plenty of torque, removes everything. Um, and then I also use a uh, just a little two inch quarter drive extension with a 10 and a 12, a 12 swivel. Um, that's for the very back bolt. And this, this is, I'm talking about on the driver's side right now. Then I'm going to use a uh, the 30 Torx to get the fuel rail off, and that that's pretty much is going to cover the uh, the driver's side. This one I've already we've already moved the air cleaning turbo, obviously, because like I said we're doing other stuff on it. The the Fickum's pretty straightforward, just on the back bolt. So I like to use a uh, the eight millimeter swivel. If you push up on the clips first uh, on the, the the wire end, you push them up and you squeeze them, you can get them. And it usually too as I'm squeezing them, I'm kind of rocking the the fit them a little bit to get off. Um, that helps out. Now on here, this is your glow plug wire. I just grab anything, screwdriver, whatever you have, release it. We push that back. When the lever's out, it works. I just I push it back through the opposite way rather than try to grab it through the clip. And this is where the two inch extension uh, comes in handy with a 10 deep. Take off the dipstick. Now when these come off, I, I do leave them if they come off with the, uh, with the stud on it. If, you, um, if you'd like, you can take it and put a 12 wrench on it and release them and install them separately. Take the 12 now and hit all the bolts. Another point I can give you this you want this bolt right here to be just a regular bolt. You do not want one of the ones with a stud on it. If you have the stud on there and the wire loom goes there, eventually it rubs it and you end up with electrical shorts. Uh, so make sure you have just a regular bolt in there like this, make sure it's like this, it goes back in the top corner there. Make sure that's there. Two common places, one is that stud, the other one is, uh, this wire is not routed correctly, it's been worked on before, but a lot of times your wire looms mounted on this side, people will get it stuck underneath the air filter and the air filter rubs through it right here. It's another common place for causing stalling. So if you do have a stalling issue, look here for the stud, look here for the air filter rubbing on it. That's the two common places for wire chafing. So now we're going to do this bolt. <laughs> okay, we've got all the ones except for the very back corner one off. For the back corner one, I use the uh, the 12 swivel. Yeah, I just use this as an extension. It works as an extension, but if you have anything a 6 inch or above, then um, that's what we use for an extension to get the back one. But then you have the valve cover now. We can remove it and it's done. Okay, depending on the year, if you have an 03, early 04, they, they do call this a fuel rail. Uh, Ford does. Uh, most people call it an oil rail or injector rail, whatever you want to call it. If you have the round style, pretty much there's nothing you do with it. If you have this style, this is actually used um, to help keep it more even idle, keeps the oil uh, more consistent and all that stuff, keeps them from dropping. But anyhow, if you have uh, an 04 to 05 may have this square one, early production 05 will have this square. I've never had one of these square ones fail yet. That doesn't mean they don't, it just means that I've never had them fail. So they're usually pretty good. But what I would recommend doing while you're having it, before you pull it off, so you can do it here, 
pull it out. We want to do that for two reasons. One, so it can drain, not make a mess here. And the other, we can inspect it. Again, the, the square drives, for some reason, I never see them fail. Must be making them out of different material. But if you have the ones that take a 10 millimeter head, um, Allen, instead of the square, half inch square, they fail all the time. What I would strongly recommend, at minimum, inspect your O-rings. That's what I'm doing. I'm wiping them off and I'm inspecting them. Inspecting them. The um, Ford has updated them. It now has a 12 millimeter Allen on the latest ones. The 10 millimeter Allen, again, are the ones that fail. The 12s do not. With this nylon here to protect it, they seem to be lasting. They've been out for probably about two years. Um, they do seem to last. Pretty cheap insurance. While you're there, just replace it. That's what I would recommend. It's up to you. And then at the same time, we'll take the... Uh, take that one out, we'll let it drain. Sometimes you may have the whole tube come out. Other times you may, it may come out in sections. The top piece and the bottom piece will stay in. Either way is fine. Um, so now we're gonna let that uh, drain for a second. Another good pointer, if these strip on you, you may end up having to do a head removal. So I don't try to get all aggressive and start you know, just hitting them. It, it may take an extra minute, but the time it saves is really gonna help you. Break everyone loose by hand. Crack them loose. Do that to each one first before you hit them with the ratchet. Okay, normally what I'll do on these, I'll lift them up off the injectors, and it's still going to going to it's going to drain, just so we don't get oil all over the driveway or on the exhaust. I'll let it sit here and drain for a minute. And lift it out, and now we have access to the injectors. Okay, we have the oil rail off, the fuel rail, whatever you want to call it. Now I'll show you a couple tricks that I use to pull off the, uh, the injectors, the wires, and to get them out of the head. Um, it's a good thing to follow because if you break any of the plastic off and it goes inside, it almost always finds the IPR valve. On this truck, we're going to do um, injectors 2, 3, and 8. The way I always remember it, the, what, what I do to remember is I remember the passenger is odd. So odd, side, odd is 1, 3, 5, 7. So just remember the passenger is odd, 1, 3, 5, 7. And then on the driver's side, two, four, six, eight. So we have two, which would be the front one. You, you can do this two ways. One, you can pull the clip all the way out. You can also take it, push them down, and pull it out and release it. I just find it better to pull it off. Again, it's preference. You know, do, do it however you feel is best. I guess if you push down on it, you don't uh, have a chance of uh, losing it. But to me, like I said, it's, I'd rather just take it off do it that way now the trick here that I use on the injectors I take a socket you could take an 18 millimeter or maybe even a 19 and we push it over it and it pulls that wire out if you get medieval on it and push it out you break these clips these little clasp here when you put a socket over it you're squeezing them together Again, this is an 18, but sometimes some people find it better to use a 19. It's a, uh, you know, the 18 is smaller, it's going to squeeze it further, works good, and then you push it out, do the same thing back here on the back. We'll take it, put it over it, and you see it drop down, and we just pull it out. Now you want to make sure all four are there. You've got two per side and then there. If they're not there, give it some kind of effort and look for it. It will go through your oil system and it will find itself to the IPR Then you have a no start. It's easier to find it now than being on the road. The injectors will come out by undoing the one, the hold down fork. This is, depending on the year, 
It's either a Torx 40 or a Torx 45. You can see I have one here that's not your standard shadow length. Um, so it gets it, it clears everything. If you have just a home set, you, you find them shorter. Um, you really should use a quarter inch drive because of the, the thickness up here. If you have okay, here we have the remanufactured injectors. Um, lubricated them. You want to put a little lubrication around the part that goes back up in the head so you don't have to fight it. And of course the ceiling, the rings on the bottom, the O-rings on the bottom here. So we're going to go ahead and install these. Again, we're replacing two of them uh, on this side, two and eight. So we'll put them in. Now every now and then I'll get one that doesn't want to go down depending on the valve position. Your valves intake exhaust. Yeah, um, they may actually interfere with it. The proper way would be to turn it over by hand so you don't damage anything. So now we have those down. You would want to start them by hand and drive them down by hand. Uh, another bit of advice is to torque these down. If you just snug them down, I, I've had, it, when this came out in 03, we were getting comebacks either from them uh, backing out or the, uh, the hold down, the, the bolt on the fork, the injector hold down, was breaking. So you can over torque them and you can under torque them. But if you use a torque wrench and torque them down, you don't have a problem. So use a torque wrench, you don't have any regrets, do it once. There's also different years that have Torx 40s, some have Torx 45. So again, you want to look it up. That's why I'm not saying the Torx specs exactly. Look it up just to make sure. But if you get somewhere around 26, 28, you're not gonna, going to have an issue. It's not critical, you just can't be too tight or too loose. Within reason. Okay, we put those in, a couple of things. One, if you notice they're indexed to where the square's on top, the, where the writing, you can see it on top and it's square. And also at this time I would recommend connecting them. Because if you get them and you connect it, and you know it's seated, you're not going to have a problem. If you only had that partially clicked, you get your valve cover all on, you're done, you think you're ready to go, and you go to push your connector on, it goes through, then you're going to be hating life. So at this time, hook your wires up. Okay, the, other, the last pointer that I can give you is when you put this on, make sure you put it on square. And what I mean by that, is don't just get it and try to pound one on and then the other one on you take a chance of damaging the seals on your injector so if you get it you've got it pretty square just push it down and also make sure every one of your bolts are hand started because you can find out that you start off at a little bit of an angle and if you start tightening them down you realize by the time you get to the end you can't get another one started so I usually start my two outer ones then get them all started and draw it down evenly. Okay, here's another point I can help you out with. This helps out on a lot of other different areas and stuff. I just realized I don't have a 12 millimeter socket to tighten the um, to tighten that new Allen wrench, the new Allen, the the dummy plug, the fuel rail plug. So rather than stopping, going down to the store and wasting all that time, what you can do is you have anything you had a six sided. So like all the group of. Uh, uh, punches and chisels I have here. I went and grabbed them in a 12 millimeter wrench because again a 12 millimeter Allen is just 12 millimeter. So I grab these, I start checking them. Here's one that's pretty large. We look at it, it fits, it's, it's a perfect 12. So I can take this Allen wrench, or chisel, stick it in there and I can use that to tighten it. And if you were doing a, a van or something else to where obviously this wouldn't fit just go over to your grinder or hacksaw, whatever it takes, cut a piece off, and then you could use a socket over it and just have a little bit sticking on your socket and get in more confined places. Um, and it, who cares if your chisel is just a, you know, another inch shorter from because you, you took a piece of the stock off. Okay, another tip that I uh, just thought of. You're, uh, these, these are what we call the stand pipes, but same thing, just like what we were doing with the dummy plugs or the fuel rail plugs. We want to check the O-rings, make sure they're good. And also, don't forget pull it apart and inspect that o-ring. I've had a couple of these through the years go bad. So if you do it now, no regrets. You don't end up with any stalling issues, hard starting, no starts hot, uh, long cranks cold. So just inspect all your o-rings when you have it off here in your hands the best time. 